This video is sponsored by videoblocks.com. So what did you think of that clip? Well, here's a fun fact. It was shot entirely handheld with a Redmi 5A. Wait, let that sink in for a minute. A Redmi freaking 5A. While it's fun to spend money on equipment for a YouTube channel, you don't necessarily need an expensive camera to shoot YouTube videos. You know how the saying goes, what matters is not the camera, but the one behind the camera. Hey guys, my name is Sundar and in this video, we're gonna be showing you a few tips and tricks you could use to get great looking videos for your YouTube channel. And if you do end up liking this video, do give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that bell icon. Let's first look at how to handle the camera, how to move it around. Easy, just put it on a universal holder and mount it on a small tripod and carry it. I'll be leaving links to everything I mentioned in this video in the description below, so do check them out. Anyway, coming back, even for regular movements, using a tripod will result in a more stable footage than holding the phone itself. Let's now get to the shots. Oh yeah, you won't see me holding a tripod here because I use the LG V30 Plus to shoot B-rolls and it has optical image stabilization which does a great job by itself. So the sun is right there. So I'm gonna be having the subject over here. First, we need to get the basics right. Generally, phones don't have huge sensors, so the background blur is relatively weak. So make sure there's enough distance between the subject and the background to get the maximum bokeh. Closer the subject is to the camera, more the bokeh. In case you want to show just a part of the phone, then go closer and get stronger bokeh. This one's easy, a simple pan. Just hold the subject in your hand, move both the camera and the subject slowly, smoothly, if you feel the footage isn't stable enough, then slow it down by 20 to 70% depending on the level of stability you are expecting and then set the time interpolation to optical flow. Even with the Redmi 5A, provided there's ample distance between the foreground and the background, we get decent bokeh. Here's another pan shot. Yeah, there isn't enough distance, but then I feel the all green background looks good. There is a bit of bokeh as well. One more for you to feast your eyes on. I'm holding both the camera and the subject so the jitters become a common sight. To avoid it, we just need to place the subject somewhere and use both hands to handle the camera. Here's the resulting footage. Now we are gonna do a whip pan. Move the camera away from the subject pointed at the sky. Do the same thing with the different view of the subject. For example, here I am turning the phone around and shooting the back. Now reverse the second footage and play both clips one after another. Looks cool, right? We're gonna do a focus pull now. This can be done only on phones with manual controls for video. I'm using a V30 here. So on manual mode, I'm using the focus slider to make the subject go out of focus and then bring it back on focus. Here's another shot. Now this is one of the coolest shots you'll ever come across. It's called the dolly zoom or the vertigo shot. It requires a bit of editing trick as well. Anyway, this is how it's done. From a distance, go closer to the subject. Make sure it stays on focus. I am focusing manually, but autofocus should get the job done as well. While editing, use keyframes to zoom into the subject. Make sure the framing stays constant throughout the clip. The end result would be mind blowing.
what I'm going to be doing now is tap to focus on the subject and once the focus is locked I'm going to move the camera away from the subject so that this background it will be blurred out. Here's a similar shot. Lock the focus on the phone. Move away and then reverse the footage. Makes for a cool intro. One more. Let's now put two of them together and throw in some transition in between. That was cool. Another way to improve the quality of footage is by using lower thirds like this and also using stock footage like you saw at the opening of this video. And that's where our sponsors for this video, Videoblocks, come in. Videoblocks has one of the fastest growing largest stock video libraries with over 3 million videos, after effects and motion backgrounds. This is the only contributor marketplace that gives 100% of the commission back to the artists. And all of these clips come with a royalty free agreement so you cannot get hit with copyright claims. And we are giving away 7 days of video blocks so you can try it out and get access to this massive video library and royalty free license for free. So head on over to videoblocks.com slash YouTube or click the link in the description box below to start downloading and get 7 days of video blocks for free. Now that we have covered shooting outdoors and spicing up that footage, as tech YouTubers, we need to shoot the phone, software aspects of the phone a lot. Cannot do that outdoors all the time due to reflections, sunlight legibility of some phones and so on. Even during the golden hours of shooting, that hour after sunrise and the one before sunset, it's limited. But if you do need to shoot outdoors, then try not to have the sun directly hit the phone. Like here, the sun's to my right and so my hands lit, but the phone's not reflecting a lot. You need to adjust the display brightness accordingly. Crank it up, but don't let the whites get blown out. It's perfect now. Alternatively, find a window. Here, the background won't be as bright. That's why you need to increase EV or exposure compensation value on your phone or increase ISO in case you have control over it. And that would mean that the phone's brightness, which we set to about 60% while shooting outdoors, will lead to blown out whites. So crank the brightness down to about 10%. We are good to go. Of course, if you have good indoor lighting, like a few CFLs on the ceiling, you can shoot indoors as well. And if you cannot find a decent background, using a white chart is a neat little trick. The clips that you just watched were all stable because the phone that we used has OIS. But if your phone doesn't, there are a bunch of inexpensive tripods that can extend as long as 50 or even 60 inches. They offer good value for the money you spend. I'll leave links to a few in the description below. Check them out. Talking about indoors, here are a few tips. Have the subject stand with the help of a counterweight or something like this mobile stand. Now place the tripod on a box and slowly move the box. This is an alternate way to pull off shots like this. You can also lock focus on the subject and move the tripod along a curved path. Now reverse the footage in post to get something like this. Out of focus to in focus. Kinda like a focus pull. So there you go, some basic tips to help you get started with your tech YouTube channel. And as you've noticed, all we'd recommend you to buy is a tripod for your phone that's priced under 1000 rupees, some charts if needed that's basically 5 rupees each, and wait, what about audio? Well, this audio you're hearing right now is being recorded via this mic. It's just a pair of earphones with a mic wrapped around my neck, and if you're wearing a shirt, it's even simple, you can use a paper clip to hold it in place. Yup, it doesn't sound as good as a 50,000 rupee mic does, but it's something most people won't notice. It will definitely help you get started. And anyway, if you found these tips useful, please hit that like button, subscribe to C4Etech and hit that bell icon to get notified each time a new video goes live on the channel. And given that we opened this video with footage shot with the Redmi 5A, let me close it all off showing you what a more powerful camera like the one on the P30 Plus can do. So I'm now leaving for the moment. Have a nice day.